Hi, I'm Josh Carr, back with another Excel modeling tip. Um, XIRs are a challenge. If you do an IRR, it doesn't care whether or not the first value is zero or not, but if you do an XIRR, it does. So with an IRR, you could highlight all of the cells or only where the values start and are non-zero, and you'd get the same result. But with XIRR, if you highlight all the values and the first value is a zero, it breaks. Whereas if you highlight just the relevant values, it doesn't. Hence, it's a problem if the first value is a zero. Of course, you never really know when the values are going to occur. If you're doing multiple deals and you're trying to run an XRR calculation, they don't all start on the same day. So how do we deal with the fact that you might have some zeros and then some values and still use an XRR? This is what you do. Same dates, same values as before. Line 20 looks at line 19 and says, is that a zero value or not? If it's a zero, it puts in zero. If it's non-zero, it puts in a one. So you get some ones and some zeros and some ones. Line 21 sums from the beginning to the current period. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six. Those twos are the same because that's a zero, but that's okay. Then line 22 just says, is line 21 a one or a zero? And the line 23 says, if you know where the values are starting, do an XRR with an offset function. An offset function says, start from a place, stay in the same row, stay in the same column, then highlight an area that is one by 11. Basically, we start at D19, and since we know that the green cell is 4 and the purple cell is 14, basically we know the start and the end. It highlights an area 1 by 11. That gives us all the values, which would be in this case D19 to N19. And then we do the same thing again for the dates, and that would be D18 to N18. And if you have the values, and you have the dates, and you do an XRR on that, you get... 17.57. In the other cells, since that's not one, that's a zero, I just put in a zero. That's what that if error function is doing. So if this is a value and the other cells are zeros, and I just simply sum line 23, I get zeros and a value in zeros, and it works as expected. It basically does the IRR in the starting period. If I make this negative 100 and that 10, you can see the IRR moves to the second position. If I make that negative 100 and zero, it still works because even though now you'd have a one here and a one there, you can't do an XR if the starting value is zero. So therefore column D still gives you a value of zero, whereas column C in this case would give you an XRR. Uh, that's how it works. It's pretty flexible. Um, if you have XRRs and you find yourself going a little nuts because uh, you have to keep changing the areas you're highlighting and stuff, uh, hopefully you found this to be helpful. I fully realize that some of you will need to look at it again. As I said, line 20 is, is line 19 zero or not? Line 21 is, sum from the beginning to now. Line 22 is, is that a one or not? And then line 23, the magic line, if you will, uses an offset to highlight the values and the dates from when you have the beginning of the cash flows. And then finally, as I said, line 15 is just summing those values. Uh, the zeros obviously are zero, and only one value will fall out to the bottom, if you will. Uh, in any event, that's how you can do a calculating an XRR over a variable time period. Hopefully you found this to be helpful. If you have challenging Excel questions that you need solutions to, uh, email me at josh at kahrrealestate.com. Please try to send your emails as if it's a question, not 80 lines of text. Uh, that would be challenging. Um, and then also, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy and wonder, you might want to check out the class I teach. And you can reach, read about that again at kahrrealestate.com. Uh, until I see you again, uh, best of luck in all your modeling exercises and keep building better models. Bye.